Good evening and welcome. We're recording tonight's session, so this is why we were asked to make sure that we have our microphone just so that um, during the recording it's recorded appropriately. So I just want to take the opportunity to welcome all of you for coming out tonight. So I'm Dr. McKay, Deborah McKay, Director of Secondary Education and Grant Compliance. The reason that we are here tonight is to talk about the North Penn Virtual Academy, which is a cyber option for our students. Students that are part of the North Penn Virtual Academy, which may be some, some of uh, your, your son or daughter may be part of that. We are, there also uh, may be folks who are part of um, one of our cyber charters, for example, Agora or any of the other multiple cyber charter schools that our students participate. So we really wanna reach out to families and to share with them the great things that we're doing with our North Penn Virtual Academy to talk and discuss and explain the forward movement to moving towards the Montgomery Virtual Platform as our platform provider for the um, North Penn Virtual Academy. And also to talk with you and to give you an overview of the contact information and who you'll be able to reach out to um, at the end of this presentation in terms of further questions. So without further ado, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Mr. Jeff Rothenberger. He's from the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit. And after uh, many months of research and exploration, we decided to move forward with the Montgomery Virtual Platform for not only our North Penn Virtual Academy students, but also for our course advancement, as well as for our summer school, which we're offering a hybrid model for this upcoming summer. So, Mr. Rothenberger. Um, I'll be turning the mic over to Stefan um, Muller here at the uh, at the end here. Or, look, have a have a How are we doing? I'm Stefan Muller. I'm, I introduced myself to most of you out in the uh, concourse out there. I'm an assistant principal here at the high school. A uh, few things about NPVA versus wherever you're at right now, Agora or, or somewhere else. Um, we, we're really excited about what we're rolling out here with, with North Penn Virtual Academy. I, I think what you'll find is we're streamlining everything. Okay, so instead of having, let's just take Agora for example, Agora during, doing their piece and, and we have some communication with what's going on and some oversight, we're now merging that together with the MCIU and I can, I can tell you based on the experience that we've had over the last few months with our, our partnership that continues to grow, there's more communication, there's more oversight than had existed prior to this. And then even with that, there's more economically advantageous partnership here uh, as, as a taxpayer, it's a better option because it's it's cheaper. Uh, but it's not. But you're getting more for what you're paying for as a taxpayer. Because I, I can tell you, uh, what we've seen in the past is, you know, and I'll just once again take Agora as the example. Agora does their thing; they oversee certain pieces. But we've heard from parents uh, that some of the commun there's some communication breakdown uh, in certain pieces and in certain times. Uh, I can tell you in the last few months, when, as, as we have begin to develop this relationship with the MCIU and, and their program, uh, there's been far more communication and far more oversight. And it's not just we contact somebody at whatever charter school we're talking about, in this case MVP and, and the MCIU. I know who I'm going to. It's either Jeff, it's Ann, or somebody that we've developed a relationship with and they get back to us right away. In ti at times, they've contacted the parents or the student uh, it, when, when they've seen things come up and they always include us on that communication thread. So it's not just two divergent paths that kind of have something to do with your child or the student. We're now all in, in one concert together. And we're saving money for the district, uh, providing it, what we think is as good or a better option because of the communication and the oversight. So we're excited for the, for the path that, that we're going down with, with uh, the cyber piece here. Uh, we think it's better for students. We think it's better for the community. Uh, and once again, we have a little bit more, we have better communication going on. And I think that is the key because students aren't here, obvi obviously, when they're doing the charter piece, they're not here. And I think that's the, the biggest downside to charter or the cyber piece at times is there's just not as much oversight or communication and I think we're really streamlining that together so we're excited for that uh, we hope you are as well um, the the intention of tonight is to give you as much information as we can uh, but also understand that we're continuing to grow with this process and, and uh, figure things out but I, I assure you that the communication and the oversight is there and I can't uh, I can't say that stress that enough uh, we've already seen market improvement with the communication to parents, to families, to students, et cetera. So I'll turn back over to uh, uh, 
uh, Mr. Rothenberger, but keep in mind, if you, you need a contact person, especially over the summer, I'll be that person, molars at npen.org. Uh, Mr. Pat Brett, one of our gui guidance counselors, uh, he's really spearheading a lot of what's going on, so it, when, if there's a question I can't answer, he generally can, and if there's a question that he and I can't answer, my friend over here can. So, and once again, the, the, everybody from the MCIU gets back to us w generally within a half hour. So I, I can almost assure you that we'll get back to you within a day uh, and have an answer for you to answer any questions that you have. So I'll turn it over to Jeff. Thank you. Yep. A little bit about, um, I guess I get to do the, uh, give you an overview of what M MVP is and where we've, where we've come from. So a little bit about what is MVP and we are um, part of the MCIU, which is the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit. And so what we offer is a comprehensive online learning solution, as, as you heard Dr. McKay and, and Mr. Mueller say. Um, North Penn is doing the online cyber program for their virtual North Penn cyber students, as well as the accelerated, um, as well as the uh, credit recovery for the summer. We offer a variety of different services. Um, we, uh, myself, was brought in to bring this program on, get this program up and running. I've been running online cyber programs for the last six years um, within different IUs across the state and getting them up and going and getting them going. Um, I'm here to stay because this is where I grew up and actually I went to North Penn. Um, so I'm back home now, so this is where I'm here to stay and get this program up and going. But we do offer a continuum of online services, um, not only SAT prep, we have credit recovery, we have, um, we actually actually well, for a variety of different services. Uh, dual enrollment is another one, which is for students who can take college credits as well. So we have a lot of different services that we offer, but right now we're working with the um, online. So what is the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit? A lot of people will say to you, what is this place? Well, we're actually located in downtown Norristown, and um, right now what we do is we support over 200 uh, public and non-public schools within Montgomery County. Uh, so we, we provide services across the board special ed services, transportation, um, technology, um, student services, business services, professional development services. We offer a variety of different services and supports to the different um, school districts within the county. So all of these services, um, one of those services was that um, they wanted to provide online learning services to the county schools as well. And so MVP, Montgomery County Virtual Program, grew out of that. So this is the building, if you've been downtown Norristown, we're on Lafayette Street, and our program is out of the Office of Professional Learning from the MCIU. Donna Gaffney is our <coughs> Office Program Admi Director. I'm the Program Administrator for running the program. Over to my right over here, Anne, stand up and wave. Anne is the person that communicates and talks and enrolls and does a lot of the groundwork for us. We also have um, Jen Wenger, who does communications and does a lot of the reporting. Ben DeSantis and Brooke Malartrick are also part of our team, and they are also consultants uh, that work with us um, within the program. So, oh, we missed a slide. Let's go back one. Uh, a little bit of background. We were established in 2015, um, so we're, we've only been up and running for about a year now. But we, I can tell you that one of the things that uh, Mr. Mueller mentioned was is, is that how does our program compare to other programs? Um, I ran a program for Berks County Intermediate for the last five years uh, called Berks Online Learning. And one of the things that they did was every year we have your students take the PSSAs and the Keystones exams. And Berks Online Learning last year had the highest scores of any cyber charter program in the state through our program. And I'm mimicking that program and brought all of those same programs and resources with me to Montgomery County. So um, I'm very happy to say that we're hoping to get some of the same results here in Montgomery County that we were able in Berks County. Um, as of 2015, we actually had 455 students last year um, enroll in many different varieties of services. And the model is built about a proven and successful approaches that I brought with me from where I came from. And like the, Mr. Mueller said, one of the things that we really work on is the fact that we're not an independent. We are a nonprofit for the schools. So we're not out to make a lot, we're not out to make any money, we're out to break even. And so what we're doing is providing the services at a break even point, um, which is a lot lower um, economical impact for different districts to be able to move forward with this program. We also make sure that it's a partnership. We work part, we take care of the services side of it, school district is part of it, 
and the parents have to have an input into this. So you are a vital part of what we're looking to do within this to make this successful. When I talk uh, to different organizations, they ask, why are, why are you been so successful in the past? Why is your program such a success? And I say it's because of this partnership. It's because we communicate with the parents. We communicate with the students. The parents are communicating with the school district. We're communicating with the school district. We're all working together to provide the services that make it very successful for your students to be um, tremendous, tremendous at what they're learning and doing. So, what's your role? You know, you're going to have to have a role in this. Um, please monitor. Make sure that you're monitoring what the students are doing. Um, we give you, all of the parents have parent portal access, which means that you can get in and see what your student is doing 24 seven. You can see their grades, their progress, how much work they've done, how many minutes they've been online, how long they've done their work, how many assignments they've taken, what their quiz scores are. Um, you can get in and monitor and see all that. Students must be dedicated to realize this online environment. We tell students during our orientation, Online learning is, is not as easy as being in a brick and mortar face to face. You have to be dedicated. You have to be motivated to be in this environment and to do this, to, to do this learning. Um, communication is also very good and students must construct and adhere kind of to a daily schedule. Even though it's available 24 seven, we ask students to make sure that they try to get on at least every day and do something. Now they can take a day off or two, uh, but we give them kind of recommendations for what they want to do. If you want to go away for a week or two, that's fine too. Um, just let us know because we are watching and, and monitoring what's going on in the background. So our keys to success is the communication, that partnership, the district liaisons, and the district liaisons are uh, Dr. McKay, um, Mr. Mueller. Um, we have the guidance counselors here tonight too as well. So um, they are our liaisons. There are people that we reach out to and that we talk with and work with. We also ask that the students come to a mandated orientation with the parents. That mandated orientation gets you to log in. We talk about being how to be successful. We talk about what it takes to be a great student in an online environment. Uh, for some of them, it's new. For some of them, they were experienced at it. But we do try to give them an overview of what it is. We also have what we consider, and I consider, to be probably the best engaged curriculum that's available out there on content. For the last six years, I've probably worked with about 15 different vendors um, to try out and look at and explore. My background is curriculum instruction, and so I've been able to go in and explore these different curriculums and look at it, but it isn't until you put a student into it and work through it that you really see, is this really um, engaging for what the students are getting out of it. Um, right now we have three vendors that we work with for the high school and for, for North Penn we're going to work with which I consider to be the best, which is Edgenuity at this point. Um, and then the district, oh, and curriculum modifications. So if your student has special needs, we can actually make modifications to the curriculum, which a lot of vendors can't do. So we can take a specific scope and sequence from a curriculum and make modifications depending upon what the student's needs are. So we have lots of flexibility with what we're doing. Advantages, what are the advantages of coming to North Penn Virtual Academy and the MVP program? Um, continuation of services, extracurricular activities, this is the big one. Coming through North Penn Virtual Academy, you will receive a North Penn diploma um, that's a little different than um, an Agora diploma or another non sarbi charter school diploma. And then the next one is really big too. So if your student is looking for um, getting, attending the um, Monco Career and Technology Center uh, in, an, in a cyber charter school program, you don't have that avail available to you. But coming through our program, they do have that available as an option as well. We all make sure that all of our teachers are PA, highly qualified and certified teachers in the state of Pennsylvania. Our curriculum is PA core aligned to the curriculum that Pennsylvania's PDE has outlined for us. And we support the schools and parents and then NCAA. NCAA is for sports. Very few of the vendors have NCAA approved um, coursework. Um, the vendors that we use have NCAA support. So if your student is looking to go on to a division one or two or three school for secondary college, um, they'll be able to go through the NCAA audit uh, and participate in sports in, in the college arena. How do we choose ours? We look for an engaging, interactive content. We look to make sure that it's, again, PA core, highly qualified teachers, rigorous, built-in supports um, for accessibility, and of course, that NCAA certified. And we do, edu we do use Edgenuity. So what does it look like? Well, a little bit, first of all, let's show you what we have to offer, okay? 
MVP, we have our own website. We, have, we work out at the IU, um, and it's mvp.mciu.org, and this is what our, our, our website looks like. And just to give you some ideas, if they click on the word students, what it's going to do is it pops up, and we have suggested calendars. We have suggested uh, attendance procedures, help desks, homework helpers. We have lots of information on our website to help students work their way through it. When they log in, what does it look like for the students when they log in? We want to give, I'm going to give you a little bit of experience with what that looks like, just to give you an experience there. When they log in, this is what they're going to see. This is their, what they call the dashboard. Um, no, excuse me, this is what is called the courses that they look at. And so the courses are listed down the left-hand side right here for what they have. Across the top, and I'll go through these, um, if we go through them, well, let's see what we get here. Um, let me just back up one second. So I do have a slide that does go through what each of these steps are, and I'll show you those in a second. So once they get into it, they also have what's called their message board. This is where they're able to communicate with their teachers. All of the teachers, like I said, are PA highly qualified. All of the teachers have office hours during the day. Um, they're, they're, they rotate, different teachers have different times, so there's teachers available every day um, during the week for them to reach out to. I tell this to, to parents as well and to students. This program provides an academic educational support for students that have any questions from 7 a.m to 11 p.m. Monday through Saturday. So anytime that a student gets stuck, they can click on one button and they can get an educator to talk to uh, about what they're doing. It may not be the teacher of record of that course, but it will be an educator that they can talk to to get an answer from. So one of the things that they can do is they can come into this. One of the things that's nice is that we've put in a start date and an end date. We, told, we try to tell students that it's really good for you to stay on track, it's good for you to set a schedule. And what it does is it automatically populates and tells them where they should be and what they need to do. They cannot jump around in the course. They can't go from this course and this point. It's sequential. They have to work through it. It's video based, most of it. So they just are watching videos. The first time a video starts up, they have to watch it completely through. They can stop it, but it'll start right where they left off. They can't fast forward through it. They can't go to the next lesson without watching the video through one time. Once they've watched it once, they can go back, they can rewind it, they can fast forward as many times as they want to. So they can get as much out of it as they need. Um, scores and feedback. The program provides tons of scores, and this again is what you would be able to see as far as feedback, how many time, what their score is, what their quizzes are, how many, you know, when did they submit them, um, was it counted, well, how many attempts did they take to do it. And when I say how many attempts did they take to do it, one of the things the program is looking for is they're looking to see, did you learn the skills, not did you pass the test or the quiz. So they give you multiple attempts. So you can take a quiz. If a student doesn't feel that they've done well on it, they can redo the quiz and go back and watch the video and watch the content again, and then retake the quiz so that they can become successful and learn the content and learn the material that they're looking to do. Another one is their progress reports, and this is their main page. They will see that there's a blue bar going across the top that tells them the, the amount of work that they've completed. The green bar tells them what, how their progress is going, and then it also has their quizzes and assessments and roles. So when we look at this front page here, the left-hand side will list all of the courses that they're in. The right-hand side says the U.S. History course, and there's my course information, communicator, sign out, and organizer up here. So when we look at the course information, that's this page right here. And what it's doing is that the course completion tells you where you are. If it's in red, you're behind. If it's blue and green, blue is on target, green is your ahead. Students can work ahead. They don't have to work at the, what's outlined here. They can all work ahead. We just don't like them to fall behind. So we really have them see these um, that's out there. The overall grade, which is the next section, tells them what their grade is. What did they do and how did they do up to this point? Where are you? How are you doing up to this point? And then over to the right is an actual grade, and that's how did you do overall. Even though we're missing some pieces, what's the overall grade at this point? You can see all of this information that's there. The next one is tells you the, the name of the course, and then the bottom is the course map. This is how the students get into it. So see the, they'll see this page that lists all their courses. They'll click on a course. This will come up telling them where they are within the progress of the course. They'll click on the course map, and what it'll do is it will take them right into the course. 
So this is what it looks like when you go into a course. It lists all of the skills and um, units of study that they're going to do over here. The first one is a new revolution. It starts out with a warm up, an instruction, summary, an assignment of some sort, and a quiz. There is a quiz with every single unit that they're going to go in and do. It's more not so as a quiz, but it's, again, it's that check for understanding, check to make sure that they learn those skills to say, do you want to redo that quiz and go back over it again. We also list all of the state standards, the skills and objectives, and also, like I said, most of it's video. They give you the video transcript there. So if the student wants to follow along and see the words and read the words as the teacher's talking, they can actually do that and follow along with it as well. Progress reports are there. So here's what it looks like. This is, a, this is the characteristics of like, this is a biology course. And again, the teacher's off to the, to the right. He would be talking. And um, this is actually an interactive slide where the flies are actually flying around the meat at this point. And then what he's doing is he's talking about what does it mean to be living. On this slide, there is a marker that's here. Anything that's on this slide, even though it's video based, they can stop it and you can highlight sections or outline um, components. And that will become part of your study guide. Even though it's part of a video, it will still become part of your study guide. They also give you headphones if you want to listen to it through headphones if you want to. And if you're in a math course for some purpose, they have calculators that pop up. Each course and gives you the tools that you need to have to be successful. There's a couple calculators. One is a basic one, and then they also have the graphing, and they have high-end um, calculators as well, depending on what you need. Yes? You can actually create your own, what we'll call e-notes, and I'll show you those in a minute, okay? That's a great question, though. Um, this is another one, and again, this is just what it looks like to show you how it would walk through it. Um, here's a science laboratory, and again, up at the top, you'll see that this is the activity. There's a section called e-notes, glossary, and transcript, and then up here is the student support button, and there's also about 18 different languages. So if you're working in a different language and your student knows different language, you can turn it on to different languages if you want to. Um, that's there. So um, just to give you an idea, here's what the e-notes looks like. The student can take paper notes if they want to. They can take e-notes if they want to. Um, one of the things that, that's not here is you can pull this up and you can just hit print page if you want to, and you can print out your notes from this point, okay? The glossary that's up at the top is basically going to give you all of the vocabulary words that are in the program. And then the transcript, again, is the transcript that's there for the students to be able to walk through minute by minute. And they can highlight any word that they want in here, and they, can, they could print this page out if they wanted to as well. So again, there's lots of resources and accessibility built into the programs to give you lots of resources. The language is there. But that student support button, that's like in a classroom. When a student has a question, they raise their hand. This is the raising hand button. They click that button, and it'll open up a chat window, and they can chat with an educator from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Saturday. They're looking to expand that to include Sundays, but they're not there yet. So soon they're looking to have that available too. Um, so how to register? Again, you're going to reach out to North Penn. We're here to support North Penn and provide these services to North Penn. Um, and we're, we're real happy and pleased to be able to be here to offer you these services. Um, we're working with a lot of different school districts in the county, and I'm hoping that our program continues to grow. Are there any questions on my side of this so far? Oh, I answered all your questions? No questions, yes. Everything is online. There are no textbooks. Um, the only thing that we do suggest is that if you're taking an English course, some of the English courses do have novels that they may want to go to the library and check them out. The novel's online, but reading online hour after hour may get tedious, so they may want to have a hard copy of that. But yeah, the, everything else is provided. All the science labs are all online. There's no extra materials uh, that go along with it. Everything is included in the program. Books are all online. No books. Yes? Um, it is, if you wanted to print page by page, you would have to do it page by page. It's not something that you could print out a whole book at a time. So it's only going to show you page by page that's going to come up. 
So it's not in PDF format that you can say, okay, let's say if I'm doing, no, because that's, you're, you could get into copyright issues with that, okay? So, that, but you can print page by page if you need to. Other questions? K through five, um, we will be using um, a similar program to this one. This actually starts at fifth grade, okay? We have what's called Lincoln Interactive that we use and Peak, which is part of the Get Fueled in K-12, which is very similar to this one. We have those three, we, we use those three programs. We, Edgenuity is looking to move into the lower grades. We anticipate that happening very shortly, but until that happens right now, we're putting uh, the K-1, 2, 3, 4, basically K-1, 2, 3, and 4 in Lincoln Interactive and in our PEAK program. Seeing same similar results, same exact components with those programs as well. Um, but for the upper grades, this one has really been successful for us as well. Questions? Yes? No. Everything is asynchronous at this point. Okay? Everything is asynchronous. Sure. This is what the dashboard looks like when they go into it. Um, and what part of the orientation, what we do is tell them down here, check the external links because what it'll do, uh, this, this actually works on every device out there except iPhones. I actually had a student try to take courses through an iPhone with me one time and I was like, it doesn't all work on an iPhone, guy. Yeah, you need a computer, okay? But Chromebooks, um, iPads, Macs, PCs, works on that. The only thing that doesn't work sufficiently that I'm happy with yet is the foreign language courses on a Chromebook. For some reason, the foreign language courses are, um, they're still on the old, um, they're not upgraded to HTML5 at this point, so they don't work as well on the Chromebooks, but everything else works great. Um, I have, and it's hard to see, I apologize, I have a Common Core Algebra course here, but when I log in, I can click on the course, um, click on the course map, down here to the side, lists all of the different relation, you know, the, the skills and concepts that they're gonna do. The warm up is available over here. And if I click the warm up, we didn't ask for, well, I have sound actually. Actually, I do. It's low. Pretty sure you need to over. And that makes me wonder, how do police know when someone's speeding? Well, they use a radar gun like this one and they compare the, the quantities of distance and time. And so we're going to be answering the question, what is quantitative reasoning in this lesson? And we'll be looking at quantities of distance, rate, and time. So let's get started. Again, what they do is they start out with some sort of a real life experience to pull in why are you learning this skill, why are you learning this concept. And so this one is about radar and about speed, and they're gonna be dealing with this in the algebra content. So again, it starts out with that kind of a warm up. And again, you just click on to the next activity. And just walk. Let's take a look at our lessons. We're gonna be interpreting the relationship between two quantities, and we'll do that in two ways. By determining the appropriate graphs to represent quantitative relationships. And then on the other side, we'll actually be determining the quantitative relationships represented by the graphs and tables. So let's go on to the words you'll need to know. And those words, the academic words that you'll need are compare and scenario. And the specific ones to this lesson that you'll need to know are constant, quantity, and rate. Just spend a little time taking a look at those, and let's just move on to the warm-up problem. In this form of problem, we're going to be determining the winner. Now, quantities are measurable characteristics of things or events. And so we're going to be considering this when mean times shown. Let's just draw a picture of what's happening. Kara swims almost twice as fast as Beth. Twice as fast. So if Kara is twice as fast as Beth, let's say that they're about here. This is the finish line. And Natalie swims about the same speed. So let's put Natalie over here with Beth. 
If Jen swims faster than Kara, faster than Kara, well, I don't exactly know where Jen is in relationship to Kara, but I know she's faster. So I'm going to put her somewhere around here, but she could be over here, or she could be over here, I'm not sure, but she's definitely above the rest. Who is the faster swimmer, Natalie or Jen? Well, I can tell by the picture that I've drawn, Jen is the fastest swimmer, but let's look at the data that goes with this, with this question. I've got my swimmers here, and I've got my time. Now, I can look at this and right away see Jen is the winner because she's got 26.2 for her time. That's the lowest time and the fastest speed. But let's look at the quantitative relationships. I can see that Jen and Kara are about the same, they're very similar times. So I really should have put Jen. I do want to stop here because a couple things I wanted to point out. One is, again, the highlighter is here for you to highlight anything. There is a calculator, and then there's a graphing component that goes with this. The plus over here is the sign that I could click on, which is going to give me an opportunity to open up my eNotes, where I could be taking notes at this point. I have the glossary, which is here, which is going to give me the, the glossary terms for all of them. So if I need to come back and I need to look at what are the glossary terms that are available, as well as if I wanted to follow the transcript. And you can highlight anything in the transcript that you want as well to make that a part of your, you know, your e-notes so that you have a study guide to come back to with that. You can do print anything that's on the screen. You can print screen at that point. You can't print anything out to get long, real long pages and pages of stuff. There, um, one of the things that, that we do with this is we don't even give a printer out anymore because everything is electronic. They don't, you know, really don't need to have that hard copy of stuff. They can come back in. They can look at it as many times as they need to here online. Yes. Right. Correct. Yes. Because you're not going to, if I give you a novel, say, that's 350 pages, you're not going to want to print 350 pages. But if I gave it to you in a PDF form and you hit print, you could print all 350 pages. So they don't give it to you in PDF form. They ask you to print page by page. So you would only print the pages that you would need at that individual point. Okay? But we also recommend that if you're going to do a hard copy instead of all that ink and the printer and all that expense, just go to the library and get the book. It's much easier. Okay. Okay. For the lessons, you can print this page out and you can print that transcript out. You can print the screen. Anything that you can see on the screen can be printed. Yes. You can only print one section at a time. So what we saw first, you could print that sec that screen out. The screen's up. You can print this screen out. It's like a screenshot. No, there's nothing that you can print ahead of time. No, there's no printing. We don't, we don't even recommend printing, but you know, I know people do like to have hard copies of stuff, um, but this program, um, we've never had an issue with anybody really having that request. Yeah, is that right? And you can, you can print page by page as you go through it if you need it. Other questions? Okay, I'm gonna... Right over there. Thank you. So I want to take the opportunity to introduce one of our guidance counselors that, the counselors that is here tonight. So we're going to be subdividing um, how our students are going to be uh, assigned to a guidance counselor. Our, guide, our students that are going to be in grades 9 through 12 will be working with Mr. Patrick Brett. Unfortunately, he was not able to be here tonight. He really wanted to be. He just wasn't able to be. Um, and then we have Ms. Laurie Schofield, and she is our middle school department chair in the area of guidance, and she will be overseeing and responsible for students K through 8. So it's my privilege to go ahead. I'm going to turn the microphone over to uh, Mrs. Schofield. Hi there. Do, um, who do we have here that is K to 8? Do we have some? You have one, two, three. Great. Um, and it's always kind of exciting to see what that would be. We would also be linked to your child's home schools counselor to make sure that it's linked in. So whatever fourth grade would take there, we'll make sure that you have the ability to take it with us. 
um, in the middle school, uh, seventh and eighth grade, they're also allowed to take their clubs and activities. You know, so anything you do at school, you're welcome. You would come to your home school to be able to be involved with those activities if you'd like to do that. And also, we just try to work really closely to make sure that your child's experience is as close as it would be um, at a North Penn school, but knowing that the home and the um, uh, cyber situation is a better one for your child, and we respect that. We just want to always make sure that link is there with us at the, at the school level. Okay, and for those of you who have been um, cyber parents with the younger ones, maybe you can let me know a few things that work well too, and we'll make sure that we have that partnership back and forth. Okay. Um, do we have any questions about the K to eight children? Anything that you know? And it's the same thing. We're gonna, and we also gonna. There's also a literacy part because I want to make sure that our children are making progress in their reading. So it'll be an initial reading test, and then there is a literacy. A class that they'll take um, have the option to take through seventh because our students in seventh grade all have a literacy class we want to make sure that your children have that opportunity too so to make sure that the literacy keeps going and then we're going to take a look at the math too to make sure that they're able to you know by the time they're in eighth or ninth grade they can take the keystone in algebra and all those things are in line um, based you know based on what their uh, options are in um, in North Penn virtual all right Great. So just to highlight a couple of things from this evening, we are very excited about the partnership that we now have with MVP, with you, and with our school because the reason that we are all here is to really to, to ensure and to work with you to uh, make sure that your son or daughter is going to be successful because it's very important to us. Your son or daughter will receive a North Penn diploma, as you heard already, and then we want them to participate in activities should they choose. It could be clubs, sports, activities, and we're going to make it a point to be sharing ongoing communications to our families that are part of North Penn Virtual Academy. By participating and partnering with MVP through the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit, it is a significant cost savings for our district because we believe that we're able to offer a quality service at a fraction of the cost by students participating in a virtual program that is um, hosted through North Penn Virtual Academy, as we described tonight. So we're going to formally end our presentation. If you wanted to stay afterwards to talk with any of us, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, but reach out to uh, Mr. Stephen Muller with um, registration questions or anything at all. Uh, Mrs. Schofield and Mr. Brett are also available. And there is a letter in the back that you had also previously received that has their contact information as well as a, a brochure for the um, North Penn Virtual Academy within the North Penn School District. Thanks for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it and enjoy your evening.